back to another edition of Idology, your weekly deep dive into all things American Idol, unofficially sponsored by the foot stomping, hand clapping return of David Cook. I'm here with season six standout Melinda Doolittle. David Cook, I heart you. Let's talk top four part deux. Anytime I say a French term, I'm just sort of like shrink physically because I know that I'm not quite saying it right, but I just <laughs> did it. I kind of felt like this was the week that Idol, the production, and Uncle Nigel gave up on Amber Holcomb. I think they actually may have. I think, um, though, it felt like Amber almost gave up on Amber. She didn't seem like she was in the best headspace. You're up there crying because you're thinking about votes, and I told you last week, it doesn't matter about votes. And I know that when you get to top four, you're completely exhausted. Your brain is not working anymore. It's stressful. You just, you see the end in sight and you're trying so hard and you know it probably won't happen. So, I mean, I get it, but I, I just, my heart went out to her this week. Is there a difference between like top five and top six week physically, mentally, emotionally versus like top four, top three? Does it actually get harder? Top four to me was the hardest week there was because that's when you're going into the home visits. There's not just pressure from you, there's pressure from your entire city pretty much because they start planning stuff and they tell you about their plans and all of that and it's all on you whether or not this can happen. It's just so much pressure so I felt for her, I really did and was proud of her that she still sang her tail off on My Funny Valentine in the midst of all of that. Don't change your hair for me. The second I realized the tide had turned from a production standpoint was the pre-performance packages when it was like, Amber oh. doesn't know any of her lyrics for the first oh. performance. You should remember the words, but I mean, it happens. People forget words. And then the second one was so brutal with Harry Connick oh. saying to her like, To be perfectly truthful, she had no idea what that song was about. I gave kudos though to Harry Connick Jr. for explaining to her what the song meant. He looks hell He's ugly. Oh, okay. Oh. And I think Harry Connick Jr., he had highs and lows as a mentor. Randy, stop. Listen. Stop. Uh, I wouldn't want him to mentor every week because he's so yes, he rooted would. in a specific singing and performance style <sighs> that I feel like he tried to iron some of that out of these top four and, and take Don't away part of what makes them them. But he asks important questions like, do you know the melody to, for starters? Do you know what the song is about? And he can detect when one of those contestants doesn't know it. And I think Amber did need to have that conversation. I just don't know that they needed to show quite as much footage of that conversation right before she went on stage. That was a little bit like, oh no. What's the first line of the bridge? Is, is your... Bigger, less than Greek. What does that mean? Do you hear the entire package right before you sing? You're normally standing in your place and hearing all of that. And so I, I felt bad for her because there's pressure on you to kind of act accordingly. What is Greek? What are we talking about? Uh, you need some help? I do. All right, let's talk about Angie. There's something about you that doesn't click with me. So uh, that said, what are you singing? Bye. Yeah, take care. <laughs> is there any way she can lose? I hate to go to Twitter, but that's where the kids are. And, <laughs> and yeah. everything has to follow the kids. I mean, even Jimmy Iovine's fashion follows the kids. So who are we to <laughs> question it? I wonder, is she so far ahead in terms of hardcore fans who will vote for her no matter what she does, that she can't be stopped at this point. There is that possibility. I have checked Twitter followers the entire time. I mean, for the entire top 12, really, I've been checking them. And Lazaro was really the only one that had a higher number to me that got sent home earlier than I thought he was going to. I'll say this about Angie. She's got to perform at her highest level. Whether or not she's going to win no matter what, she wants to have a satisfying victory. She doesn't want to have yes. a moment like Lee DeWise's in season nine, where he sort of choked during the finale and, and it sort of tarnished his win. She's got to do a little bit better than she did on Someone to Watch Over Me. But I will say, I liked her arrangement on Diamonds. I liked that she showed some oh, creativity, yes. that she tried something yes. different. She had a few vocal problems at the end that I think yeah. were a much bigger problem than the arrangement. And it was weird because the judges only said like- It's not a song that really supports you changing arrangements because it just didn't go anywhere. I don't really think that's the problem. I kind of thought her arrangement was cool. Randy, Randy stop. Listen, stop. Listen. It was awesome, especially the beginning. At first sight, I'd felt the energy of sun rays. I loved it. And once 
the percussion and everything came in, it wasn't my favorite arrangement anymore. So shine bright tonight. Angie brought those lyrics to life. When I'm singing along with Rihanna's version, I'm like, I don't even know what she's saying. She says something about like moonshine and Malik. I don't even know what that's about. But with Angie, I, mean, I understood what the song was about. It was sort of like this sort of new age crystal romance, you know? Oh. She felt the energy of his sun rays the first time she saw him. And I was like, oh, okay, Angie, now I know what that song's about. And I saw the life inside of your eyes. The more problematic arrangement for Angie this week was someone to watch over me. Yes. The first half, where it was just her and the hot guitarist, and it was sort of a lullaby, I was like, okay, I'm starting to get into this. And then the yes. band kicked in, and I don't know, I don't even know what they did, but it was like they were playing a different song. It may be different for the contestants now at this point, but there were a couple of times in my run on Idol where the arrangement was not exactly what I asked for. And even though I would say this is not exactly what I asked for, it was what they wanted to play, and so it's what they played. And so i am that's the only reason I say it may not have been her fault on that one, because a lot was happening behind her, and she was just keeping her cool. She kept steady, and I love that she didn't try to go with the arrangement, which makes me think it was not her choice in the first place. Mariah sort of pinged Angie for focusing too much on where the camera is at. There was a bit of a sense, and you did look gorgeous, but that you were playing to the camera. And I will say, I think that that's one of the reasons that her detractors say that she doesn't quite connect with certain songs uh. or material. I don't know if that helps or hurts her in the end, though. Do you have to reach through that camera to every person in America and invite them in because she's got like these magnificent eyes and Nigel right. loves focusing in on that face of hers more so than any <laughs> right. other contestant. They do encourage you to pay attention to the cameras as much as possible because they're like, while there are 500 people in this room, there are millions of people that you have to reach and make them vote for you. And so your instinct is to try to connect as much with the camera as possible. And so I, I see what she's trying to do. I think her issue is that it doesn't quite come off as genuine. It more comes off as practice. I will say too that she benefits greatly from spontaneous pre-performance packages. She was really funny with Harry Connick <gasps> oh, Jr. this week. Oh, that was perfection. Yours, Yours, I don't like, like you. So I guess to sort of answer our question, can she be defeated? Maybe, you know, anything's possible. I think especially if Candace or Cree can pull out the big guns and give us like a love song moment. But for Angie, I think she has to just give us her absolute best version of herself. It's not just about winning the competition. It's about those last few weeks of momentum that are gonna start your post-idol career. Even if you have to go out right now, you wanna go out on the best note possible. That's that's the taste that you want to leave in all of the voters' mouths because you need them to support you after the show is over. So no matter what, they all have to bring their A game at this point. To me, that's what Candace Glover did this week. She knew that she was in the bottom two. She knew that the production, given its druthers, would take Amber to the final three over her. And I think she came out thinking, well, if the Bruno Mars song and You've Changed are my last two moments on this stage, I am going to beast my way through them. She brought tears to my eyes on the Bruno Mars song. Even though they talked about her not changing the pronoun of man to woman and all of that, I thought about it. I thought, I wonder why she's not doing that. But then I didn't care at all when she started singing. Hey. And then when she got to You've Changed, I don't even, I don't even remember what happened to me. The tone that she used and then when she would like go strong and then go right back to that really quiet oh, oh, oh. sparkle in your eyes. Oh, I mean with the sparkle in your eye, the light touch on, cause she went from you changed to the sparkle in your, you know, I'm not gonna yeah. sing it cause that would get ugly. You she epitomized what Harry Connick Jr. was trying to say about if you know the melody and you know what the song is about before you start singing it, then any embellishment will come from an honest place and it will take 
the, the entire audience to another level. I will just say, because I never like to let go of anger, Randy once again managed to use the term church girl. You can never take a church kid like her or Amber and say don't sing runs. And Nikki was like, oh yeah, I can see your market now. Did you lose weight? I can now see Candace, a current R&B singer right now. Right. I don't know if you lost weight. Rated I for I can't. Randy, stop. Listen, stop. So let's talk about freedom. Some contestants, they poor on one song, but really great on the other. It bugged me when Jimmy said, I think I'd prefer that than two good performances and tried to imply somehow that Cree's performance of See You Again was middle of the road. I, I thought it was fantastic. It was amazing. And I was nervous for her for doing that song right after Carrie had done it. I will carry you with me, yeah. To me, it was so much better than the Carrie performance and I love me some Carrie Underwood. So that's hard to do. I did, however, not enjoy her performance of Stormy Weather as much. Yeah, it was a rough I've... end to her night. Stormy Weather. Cree is amazing at those melody songs when she just kind of lets her voice do the work for her. And this time she tried to add too much into it. And I, I don't think it worked for her. Here's the thing with Cree. She cannot afford a performance like that again. I think she's the underdog going into the final three. Yeah, she is. And I think everything needs to be at See You Again levels if she's gonna have any shot of making the finale. She's so capable of delivering stellar performances if she doesn't let all the conflicting information get to her, which I don't know how you don't. Randy, stop! Listen, stop! Listen. I just want them to make the decision hard for everybody. That's all I want. Like, I want it to be one of the closest top threes that they've ever, ever had in Idol history. So, and this is the top three that's capable of doing that. I'm Haley Steinfeld and you're watching ENTV. Hi, my name is Kieran and Shipka and you're watching ENTV. Aubrey Plaza, ENTV. I just touched it with my mouth, sorry.